Yeah. Hi. We are the Mailey Finger family. Wanted to reach out to everyone and wish everyone health and wellness and give um, some shout outs to the people in the grocery stores and the delivery people and the people in the medical field who are all um, keeping us going. Ella came to say hi. Chloe's behind the camera. Hi. John's down on the boat. So not all of us are here, but all of us are home. And um, Ella's going to go do some homework now. She just wanted to say hi. And so I thought, I heard there were a bunch of people that were baking at home. And we've been doing the same thing. Like, uh, it's so primal. And it's so comforting. And um, it's something that we do on the boat all the time. It's something that we can control to a greater or lesser extent, right? Of the few things in our life that we can control right now. So I thought it might be fun uh, to do a couple of bake-alongs with you guys. And then I want to hear anything that you want to... Any, I want to hear feedback from you all. So uh, today we're going to take one of the oldest and best standbys from my first and um, most recent cookbook, At Home at Sea. And it is um, the crusty peasant bread recipe on page uh, 140 in the new book, in the, the, in the second edition. It's also in the first edition. So um, the process is pretty simple. Um, it's five cups of flour. Who did not think this through? Hmm? <laughs> okay. All right, great. All right, so five cups of flour. And um, the measurement does not need to be precise. Um, one of the ways that you can make it a little bit better is to just level it off there at the top. Don't, don't um, push a flour down because then you'll, your numbers will be off. Where are we? Are we on four? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that looks like five. Do you know, Chloe? No, I think that was five. Okay, we're gonna stop there. It looks like five. Okay, so then um, it's just a little bit of yeast. And if you can't get yeast at the grocery store right now, um, of course there are ways to make bread with sourdough, which I would cover in another time. And then I was thinking I'll do a another time a recipe um, some kind of bread recipe that doesn't have yeast, that uses baking soda and or baking powder as the leavener. So the yeast goes in, and for those of you who are following along, that was a precise measurement of um, one and a half tablespoons of yeast, and then this is the salt, which I also um, a lot of times just eyeball because I've done this so many times. So I mix all that up together. And there are two ways to go about doing this recipe. Um, one is to knead it in the traditional kneading way, and the other is this way that I've been working on the boat um, recently by actually just turning it a number of times. So it's a looser dough, and it doesn't, requ it doesn't require that it comes out of the bowl. The water's warm, and again, um, it's about two cups of water, but the last thing to go in is the water, and that is the most flexible measurement, um, given whether your house is um, a dry house and or whether you're in you know, a humid place and that sort of thing. So up here in the northeast, our houses are dry right now. And Chloe, if you can come kind of look at this for a second, we'll show them what it's starting to look like. So as I'm pouring water in here, I'm starting to look at what's happening to the last little bit of flour. And I'm, I'm kind of watering that and then pulling it away from the sides. Now there's a little bit more. It just needs just ever so slightly more right there. And then I mix all of this Together, I'm going to add just the tiniest bit because we want, again, for this to be a looser dough if we're using the technique that I'm showing you right now. So, we'll get this to a point where it's all together and a little bit off of my fingers. And then I'm going to set it aside for 10 minutes or so, 5 or 10 minutes, come back to it. Now you can look at me again, sweetie. Um, Set it aside for 10 minutes or so, come back to it, 
10 minutes or so, come back to it, and it's going to be this same process of kind of folding in on itself. So right now you can see that it's really craggy and mottled and a little bit of a mess, right? And if we were to put this on the board to knead it, um, it would be way too moist. Um, but for this process, it's not. So I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and I'll be right back at you. Okay, so now we've waited probably 10 minutes and you can see that it's still craggy, but it's definitely softened. And as I turn this and fold it over on itself, now you can start to see that some of those lumpy, craggy, mottled bits went away and it's starting to look like the, the stre this stretchy bit, that's gluten, is starting to develop. So that's great. The yeast works, our bread is happy, and that's all we need. That's it. And I'll do this three or four more times, stop and start, and then I'll come back to you again. Okay, so now we've done all the turns. I probably turned uh, four or five times, just like that, at five or ten minute intervals. And then we let the dough rise, right? So we put it in a warm, dry spot. We covered it up. We kept it moist. And now it's just delightful and happy. All right, so I'm going to pull it out onto this counter. I'm using my hands as a spatula. And... Again, it's really loose and happy. That is, that feels wonderful. Now, um, tonight in our family, half of this is going to become bread and the other half is going to become pizza. So, the one half will set aside, right? That's going to be pizza dough. So that's going to have, that's going to end up getting some grated mozzarella and some roasted cherry tomatoes and some sofrasada, all of which are either hanging out in the freezer and or um, in the refrigerator. Okay, so I just shaped that loaf, right? Just by tucking it ever so slightly. In this technique, the um, tucking is a little looser. In a kneaded technique, it would you kind of get it a little tighter. But in this instance, you just want to get it like not tucked under itself. And we'll put it on this tray, and then sprinkle a little more flour on the top, and we'll let it rise again. So we'll just let it rise to double again with this little piece of plastic, and that'll take in our house right now probably going to take a half an hour. In your house, who knows how long it'll take. It takes the time it takes. So wait and let it be um, what it is and or encourage it by tucking it in the oven in a warm, you know, or the furnace room or some of the warmest place in your house that um, yeast still wants to live. Okay, we'll be back. So it's been really fun to think about you guys and to share a recipe with you. I'm going to actually put the recipe on the blog so that you have it start to finish, even if you don't have the cookbook. Ask me questions. Tell me what else you want me to bake for you and or cook together. So what recipes should I post? What are your favorites? Um, let's have a conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Everybody stay safe. Be kind. Stay calm.